For most of us in the eastern United States, there are five common species of dark blue and black butterflies. Four of those species are swallowtails, but one of them isn't. At first glance, the red spotted purple looks like the dark blue and black swallowtails. However, if you give it a second glance, it is easy to tell apart because it lacks the swallowtails. Although the red spotted purple was once considered its own species, it is now considered a subspecies and has been combined with the white admiral. However, since the two subspecies look very different, they are typically still referred to by their original common names. Many of us do not have to worry about the white admiral. It is found primarily in Canada and north into Alaska. The red spotted purple is the subspecies found throughout most of the eastern United States. However, there is an area where these two subspecies overlap that many of you watching will need to be aware of. This area of overlap roughly corresponds to the New England and Great Lakes region where the two subspecies overlap, they hybridize, and you will get a variety of different wing patterns that are integrates between the two subspecies. Isn't genetics fun? If you are finding the red spotted purple as interesting as it is beautiful, flutter on over and pollinate that like button. Red spotted purples are medium sized butterflies, roughly the size of their cousin the viceroy. When their wings are open, they are black with a blue wash on the hind wings. When their wings are closed, they are mostly black with a band of blue near the edge, a row of orange spots next to the blue, and then a few more orange spots near the body. The coloration of the red spotted purple mimics that of the pipe vine swallowtail, which is unpalatable to birds. Because the red spotted purple looks like an inedible butterfly, many birds will leave it alone. In fact, the red spotted purple's range overlaps almost exactly with that of the pipe vine swallowtail. The northern portions of the pipe vine swallowtail's range are where you will find the intergrades between the red spotted purple and the white admiral. Once you move completely out of the pipe vine swallowtail's range, you are into white admiral territory because the mimicry only works if the pipe vine swallowtail is also present. Even the caterpillars of the red spotted purple are amazing mimics. They look like bird poop. Swallowtail caterpillars in comparison will often look like bird droppings when they are young, but swallowtail caterpillars lose this characteristic as they get older. However, red spotted purple caterpillars always look like bird droppings. In much of their range, the primary host plants are wild black cherry and other members of the rose family. They are sometimes also found on willows, poplars, cottonwoods, aspens, and viburnums, and occasionally on a few other species as well. Many species of caterpillars hide on the underside of a leaf or roll a leaf up and hide inside of it when they want to rest. But not the red spotted purple caterpillar. It gathers its frass, the entomology nerd word for insect poop, creates silk to connect the frass into a stick, attaches the frass stick to the tip of the leaf it has been eating, and then crawls out to the end of the frass stick, which I guess is a pretty good strategy. I mean, how many predators are gonna crawl out on a poop stick to eat a pile of bird droppings? Each year, there are typically two generations of butterflies throughout the red spotted purple's range. In the southern portion of their range, the late summer through early fall generation is often the largest. However, all the adult butterflies will die by the end of fall. It is the caterpillars that will overwinter and produce the next generation of butterflies in the spring. The caterpillars create hibernacula in which they hibernate throughout the winter. The hibernaculum consists of a leaf that the caterpillar rolls up and attaches to a twig of its host tree. This hibernaculum looks like any other curled up dead leaf hanging on the plant through winter. The caterpillar then crawls inside its leafy sleeping bag and hibernates until spring. When the tree begins putting out fresh, new leaves again, the caterpillar will emerge and continue feeding before forming a chrysalis. In keeping with the caterpillar's seeming fascination with poop and mimicry, even its chrysalis looks like a big pile of bird droppings hanging from a twig. Sigmund Freud would have loved this caterpillar. Have you been dreaming of having a pollinator garden on your property, but just don't know where to start? We are now offering group coaching here at Backyard Ecology. This is a program that when you get through with it, you will have a plan that tells you exactly what you need to do to have the pollinator garden of your dreams. If you would like more information about this, there is a link in the description. Although we often associate butterflies with open areas with lots of flowers, that's not the best place to look for red spotted purple butterflies. They prefer open woods, woods edges, and suburban areas that have a good number of mature trees. They can also be found along wooded creek banks, mud puddles and dirt roads, and similar locations. This is one of the species that likes to puddle or gather moisture and nutrients from mud, like these red spotted purples enjoying an otter toilet along a creek with various swallowtails and other butterflies. Hmm, more poop. 
Red spotted purples also aren't as attracted to flowers as some of our more familiar butterflies. They will drink nectar from flowers occasionally, but they prefer to get their nutrients from the sap of trees, overripe fruit, piles of dung, again with the poop, and decomposing animals. Understandably, most people don't want to add piles of dung or roadkill to their butterfly gardens. However, that doesn't mean you can't attract these beautiful butterflies to your yard. Try putting out overripe fruit, watermelon rinds, or similar items. As a bonus, other butterfly species that aren't as attracted to flowers may also come to the overripe fruit. Another option is to create a mudding spot or puddling spot if you have a bare spot of ground that you can keep moist. To learn more about how to attract the red spotted purple and the other butterflies that aren't all that into flowers, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.